Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next uh, podcast in our series with our very special guest, Mr. Uh, Satish Kumar, who is a yoga and meditation teacher based in Jakarta in Indonesia. It's a very, very um, great pleasure to have you as my guest again. So, so I'm sending out some warm greetings to you now, Satish. Hello there. Hi. 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 Fine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm really well, and um, the weather in the UK is improving, which is which always is very good for lifting one's spirits. <laughs> but I believe it's about 32 degrees in Jakarta, where you where you're based. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Oh, correct. Correct. Very nice. We're not quite 32. I think we might be about 25 today, but still, it's very nice. Very good. Okay then. Well, um, well, basically, Satish has agreed. Um, to be my guest as I go through another NLP technique. NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's about using language um, through thoughts and behavior to be able to bring about positive and meaningful change in one's life. And in this NLP series, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a deep dive into looking at one of the NLP techniques. Uh, one of them is called pacing and leading, okay? a really, really important part of communication to be able to pace and lead accordingly, okay? So at some point in this podcast, I will be doing a screen share of the information. But in the meantime, what I thought I'd do is just talk a little bit about uh, pacing and leading as a neuro-linguistic programming um, technique. Now, when we're talking about neuro-linguistic programming, we're talking about establishing excellence. It's about the science of success. And it's about using the combination of our mind and, um, and our language to be able to communicate in particular ways. So then we gain the most benefit from all of our interactions that we have with people. Now, some neuro-linguistic programming techniques are, they have more of a direct therapeutic benefit but some techniques, like the one I'm going to be discussing with you today, pacing and leading, that's more about improving one's communication and, and communicating in different ways in, in different situations. So pacing and leading is a very popular neuro linguistic programming technique designed to establish rapport and induce social compliance. And neuro linguistic programming is a psychological technology that Richard Bandler, and John Grinder developed in the late 1970s, and its roots lie in hypnosis. NLP as a model is excellent for self-help. It's becoming increasingly popular, um, and, and very famous lifestyle gurus like Anthony Robbins, or Tony Robbins, you may, you may kind of heard of his name. He, he very, very cleverly uses NLP techniques like pacing and leading to be able to get his message across, and more importantly, to persuade the audience to be able to undertake lots of behavior changes. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what is the purpose of pacing and leading? Well, it can be thought of as a single tool designed for a single purpose, not dissimilar to a flat head screwdriver. However, as we've all most likely experienced, like most screwdrivers, NLP is not only used for which it is intended, although there is only one purpose for which it is typically taught. So therefore, the purpose of pacing and leading is to create rapport, okay? Now, what is rapport? Rapport is when you have that mutual understanding, empathy, and bond with person. Some may even liken it to persuasion, influence, or to convince. So when you think of situations where you need to make someone understand something, you need to get them to really understand how you're feeling, you may need to persuade someone to think about something or do something or to influence. Now, this could be important in your personal life, in your personal relationships with family, friends, with your partner, et cetera, with your children, but also things like knowing how to persuade and to convince and influence properly is the cornerstone of good business. Some may argue that you know, some of the best business people are those who are able to create a rapport with the audience. And through marketing and publicity, 
or through TV adverts or videos on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. Lots of people, you'll know, well, once you've listened to my podcast, you'll notice that lots of people out there in the media, in the mainstream media or in social media, they use pacing and leading to be able to draw people in. So they can either watch more videos, they can subscribe, or they can actually, you know, maybe consider having a free coaching session with them or for them to be able to buy a product and things of that nature, okay? And this really, in terms of getting that rapport, is between the observer and the subject, or it could be a group with objects who wish to communicate openly and productively towards a clear and well-defined goal. Now, isn't that so important in everyone's life? To be able to communicate clearly, to be able to observe, to be able to communicate, to be able to get the most out of our interaction. Now, even though I'm obviously doing this presentation in English, and the examples I'm going to give you are from the English language, pacing and leading can be adapted to any spoken language across the world, okay? So you can pace and lead in your own uh, first language, in the language that you feel comfortable using on an everyday basis, or you may switch languages if you're working internationally. Um, whatever that language might be, you can use pacing and leading accordingly okay and that's really important to understand so why and how does this tool actually work well if you think about it we are social creatures and our survival has depended upon social cooperation we've developed certain behavioral patterns to help make that process easier and incredibly more efficient for survival of our species so communication equals life communication equals survival so we need to be looking at ways of trying to work together, developing our interpersonal social skills in order to be able to get the most out of each other so we can live, survive, and even better than survive, even thrive as well. So one of those systems is the necessity to translate data into chunks or easily source data. And because we speak language, but which is not identically to one another, we have demonstrated throughout, throughout that as primates, we translate data in the form of language. That can be both verbal linguistics, verbally, but also through body language as well, nonverbal communication into a format that we can store quickly and easily, known as the gist or the, or the overview and summary of a conversational content. Now, pacing the leading is a communication tool designed to feedback or pace the experience of what's happening and once rapport is is demonstrably evident uh, which is where you call in nlp terms um calibration once you get the calibration you then use the pace to then link what is being experienced across which is the lead to what is desired of an outcome so first of all you're talking to someone you connect with them which is you collaborate then one person will then pace the conversation. So we'll start asking questions, give prompts, give nudges. And then also, then you'll then probably find that one or, the, or both people will try and lead the conversation, okay? In a certain direction. Because every conversation for it to be effective and successful needs to go in a particular direction. And that's where pacing and leading. Have you ever thought about why certain conversations don't go anywhere? They're very convoluted they're very random, it's because no one's taking charge or responsibility of, of how to pace the conversation, how to pace the information, how to manage the discourse that is being uttered by one person, and no one's taking leadership in leading it. And this is where you get breakdowns in communication and you have communication problems. So for example, if there is a marital issue between a husband and a wife or two partners, and they're, they're ending up arguing. They don't see eye to eye. It's because one person is, not fa is, is basically not able to pace the conversation in a more productive or meaningful way or, or to lead it. And sometimes when, when our emotions get the better of us, you know, we don't pace and lead because our emotions rule the content. And this is why sometimes, you know, sometimes um, inappropriate language might come out. And that's something to be aware of. That, that's a consequence of not pacing and leading 
appropriately, okay? Now, NLP techniques like pacing and leading, they are all around us. And you can observe pacing in almost any family or social situation. Even watching, um, even watching, say, you know, the, the, you know, like for example, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, how he ran his briefing yesterday at the podium at 10 Downing Street. He's obviously paced what he's going to say. You know, he's leading people in certain directions. He's putting them, he's putting them in a certain situation, but he also wants to lead the information so people are clear with what directions uh, we have to move forward in terms of the e easing of the lockdown, okay? And obviously, um, the way he was leading, leading the, the briefing yesterday was quite clear. It was leading toward letting people make, the, make it aware to people that he's now, now saying to people that lots of shops and restaurants and cafes can open now, but not everything can open. But he's still was leading us in the direction that the majority of retail shops, uh, outlets are now going to be open from the 4th of July. And that's where he was pacing and leading the conversation. Okay. And also, you may well find there might be some good examples of people, maybe in your family, who know how to pace what they're saying. They're very, they're very mindful about the words they're using. And if you're using good pace and leadership in what you're saying, then you normally have a very, very good structure. Okay. And that's something to bear in mind as well. Now, you know, you, you may also want to consider the use of nonverbal communication because somebody who's pacing and leading, they may, they may well, like for example, like me, I may be using, you know, first of all, we're going to do this. This is the first step, the second step, the third step. So I'm using my hand to be able to pace and lead what I'm saying. Okay. Sometimes pacing and leading, you might want to say five points. Number one, blah, blah, blah. Number two, da, 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 da. Three, da, 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 five, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So by using your bodily gestures in combination with what you're saying, that can also help you to structure something. So it's nonverbal, the nonverbal communication can work hand in hand. And that's really, really important. Okay. And and NLP techniques like pacing and leading is really the way that we help we help ourselves to fit into the world. Okay, so pacing and leading is a way that we fit in. So the longer we spend in each other's company, the longer uh, we get to know each other and the, and the more we can then judge the pace of what we have to say. And I know for certain people, maybe people might find the way I talk is too fast and that's fine, you know, but then if I'm told that or I'm aware of it, I will then slow down my speech. I will then use different vocabulary. Uh, I may use more eye contact or may, may use more hand gestures to pace and lead the conversation because I want my, my interaction with people to be meaningful and purposeful and so they can then continue to engage with me and that's really, really important. Okay, and that there's also a habit as well. I mean, it's like any habit. Habits take time to embed themselves into, our, into the way that we are. So if people regard, if they, if they think they're not pacing and leading enough or effectively in conversation, then it's, it's all about practice. It's all about getting, you know, just trying things out, maybe watching other good speakers, how they pace and lead and so on. You've also got to be able to use your voice appropriately as well. You've got to be able to like, when you're pacing, you've got to, you know, sometimes you may want to use intonation, which is rising and falling tone. So sometimes if I'm pacing something, I may start with a very quiet voice and then increase it and then it gets louder and louder and louder. So the learners can see a pattern of how I've paced that conversation with the tone changing, okay? With the volume increasing slightly or the volume going down, 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 down. So that's maybe a way of getting someone's attention. So you can use nonverbal communication skills like that as well. Other scenarios where there's really good examples of pace and leading, my goodness, you've probably seen like lots of court cases on television, maybe live ones, real ones, or on, the, on film. And the lawyers will, are excellent at pacing and leading to get their arguments across. And obviously, if it's the defense, they, they want to make out that the potential pros, the alleged prosecutor has done the crime and they will lead, they will pace and lead what they're saying in a direction that hopefully will catch that person out. So pacing and leading is very, very commonplace in the law courts, used by lawyers, used by barristers who are representing their clients to basically help them to, you know, to defend them or to, you know, to, or, you know, to be able to 
help them to then, you know, um, you know, to, to be uh, uh, relinquished from whatever they've been accused of. All right. So really it's about, it is about, as I said to you before, it's about having that particular pace and leading. And that's so important. And what I'm going to do now, everybody, is I'm just going to um, put a slide on my screen so then you can all see it. And that way then we can then do some further talking about pacing lean. Just bear with me while I just find the screen. Thank you for your patience, Satish. Thank you very much. Here we go. Okay. Right. Okay. So basically there are one, two, three, four, five. There are five steps that people need to take in order to pace and lead effectively and successfully in making sure they get the outcome that they want from a particular communicative situation. Okay. And I put a little formula there. One plus two plus three plus four plus five equals rapport. And once you've got the rapport going, then you can take people in all sorts of directions and then you've got their engagement. Okay. Now, pacing and leading is something that can be very powerful for coaching, uh, for teaching, training, mentoring. If, there is a, if you're a salesperson and you want to be able to uh, you know, take someone on a journey, so then eventually they will sign on the dotted line and they'll then sign away whatever it is for them to get your service or product, okay? It's, a, it's used by business people to get negotiate deals um, you know, negotiation relies on pacing and leading. And I know, I know before in the UK, before the coronavirus pandemic struck, before the biggest problem on the news was Brexit, you know, the UK uh, leaving um, the uh, European Union. And I dare say there must have been lots of pacing and leading going on to try to negotiate, you know, on both sides. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to go through each one. All right. And then I'm also going to go through some language, some words that might be quite helpful. And then I will then ask my colleague Sadish to be able to comment on what his thoughts are on pacing and leading. Maybe give some examples of what's helped him. So number one, developing and determining your well-formed outcome. Okay. So you need to be very clear in terms of when you are starting to think about getting a rapport with someone and you want to pace and you want to lead, what is your outcome? What is your goal in that conversation? Do you ever think of your conversations as being goal or target orientated? Okay. For me personally, if it's a very informal situation, like I'm talking to family or friends or colleagues, you know, just informally, then there is no need to have a, an outcome just, just to, you know, talk generally informally. Okay. However, if I'm, if I'm making a complaint uh, about something, then I know exactly what I want. You know, I want my complaint resolved. I want that refund. Uh, I want a better service. I want someone to listen to my queries. So that way that will then pace and lead. That will automatically pace and lead the conversation accordingly. Okay. So develop. Now, if you already have rapport with the family member, you don't need to follow these steps. These steps are only important if you need to pace and lead with a particular purpose or goal in mind. Okay, that's number one, developing and determining your well-formed outcome. Number two is pacing. Experience we are having, the pacing is the experience we're having in the moment uh, when we are pacing, okay? So for example, things like um, as you sit there comfortably, as you consider why you are here now, as you think about, even now, while you're sitting there. So these are ways of trying to pace, okay? You're asking some open questions. So open questions are really good for setting the pace. I mean, you've probably heard of the term, how to set the pace. Sometimes asking a question, sometimes a very thought-provoking question can actually set the tone and the pace of the whole interaction, okay? Saying something hard-hitting, like a hard-hitting fact, did you know so many people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, is a way of trying to set the pace. Then it's about trying to get people's attention. And that's really important. That's number two. And number three, pacing, linking experiences with causal effect phrases. 
So things like, and as you sit there comfortably and you begin to really listen to the sound of my voice, that's one way of doing it. Now, I don't know how considering uh, you are, but we'll also allow you to. And since you have thought about, you can also become aware of how easy it is to think about. And as you sit there and begin to realize how important certain conversations really are, so again, these are very good phrases to help you link things with cause and effect, okay? If, this, if you do this, this is gonna happen. Because this happened, that's going to happen, okay? Number four, leading. This is where you're linking the phrases with meaning phrases, okay? Linking experience with meaning phrases is leading. So for example, you are forced to, you must know, this causes you to, you begin to know. This is where you're leading them in a certain direction. You're leading towards the outcome of your conversation, what you wanna get out of them. Somebody who is trying to sell a product, maybe a holiday, will pace the conversation uh, and then, but they'll lead them. And the way they might lead them is say, oh, just, just imagine, you know, going to that beautiful beach, blue sea, white sands, you have people serving you, you know, and I, I can know you can see it. And look, it's only a step away. If you sign here, you can have a brilliant holiday. That's leading, okay? And number five is confirming compliance. Check that the cause effect model actually works, okay? So here, you kind of get some kind of recognition from the other person that they have effectively been led, okay? That they're, that they're on the same page as you. Because you've been able to pace and lead the conversation, they're now thinking the way that you're thinking, the way they're, they're mirroring and matching your phrases and say, oh yes, I understand that. Yeah, I totally agree with you, okay? Now, I just wanna go through some language because really we're talking about cognitive processing phrases when we're trying to pace and lead. So for example, you may find you are most effective when you begin pacing and end leading with words like this. Remember, imagine, notice, paint this picture, think for a second, recall the most memorable time in your life, envision, envision this goal, picture this, create this amazing image in your head, okay? So these are very powerful ways of, for someone to pace and lead. Okay, you've also got bridging phrases for cause and effect like and as you, forces you to, makes you, causes you to. So these help to do the linking. Now you can do belief building or some cases destroying phrases. It depends, it depends on how you wanna lead someone. But obviously what we're trying to do is make people think about in positive ways, you know, how do you know? Maybe not, are you sure? And also action phrases like now, Step inside, look, play with, as in terms of play with the idea, play with the, with the possibility, okay? Allow that, allow your mind to go into a different dimension, different space. Just think for a second or just breathe, okay? Gently ease yourself into it. Go ahead, feel free to think like this. Naturally, you will think, okay? So these are action phrases that you can use as well to be able to to help you, okay. So then, so then Satish, so basically I've gone through another technique in neurolinguistic programming, which is about pacing and leading. We've gone through some examples of each of them and how you can use language. So, um, so I'd welcome your feedback on that presentation. Is there anything that you'd like to say in terms of maybe how you personally use pacing and leading for you to be able to do the, you know, to have the interactions that you have with people? And does the pacing and leading depend on the person you're with, the context, whether you have a goal in mind in the communication that you have? So I'll open the floor to yourself, Satish. Yeah, it's a very good technique. Uh, so as you know, Ma, that when you start the conversation and the end the conversation, you must be master the, in communication. Communication yeah. will, you should be master. Mm. To master the skills mean uh, you have a very good, uh, powerful voice modulation. Yeah. If you speak uh, a rotten speed, slow, nobody mm. will. So you reduce the speed of your volume, voice modulation, increase your volume, reduce your volume of speech. Yeah. And, uh, suddenly 
and also another thing is uh, what you have done what you have done the speech was good excellent so we have to allow others will listen yeah and speak mm -hmm. that is very important allow others to speak yes so if we speak continuously speak and uh, uh, leading the conversation and everything so they will not they will lose the interest yes yeah that, that's not, that's, that's so true and I, I just want to ask you um uh, satish you know as an experienced yoga meditation teacher are, are you conscious of using pacing and leading when you're when when you are using meditation uh, technique sure. with people yeah my previous classes also you might have listened to me when I, when i was doing the meditation technique i used some phrases words so i make the voice high pitch voice suddenly yeah. i use the voice yeah make a ski yeah normal voice so to grab the attention of the listener so i, I spoke the um, very uh, what what you call us the murmuring words so we will uh, get the attention of the listener mm. so that important voice modulation is very very important one of the very important technique and also we have to allow the person uh, to deliver their intention for example mm. now you told that the boris mr boris johnson made yeah. a speech in the downing street That's so right. what, he should not make the conversation completely so middle of the conversation he make a pass the pass is very important you make a pass and he will ask the audience how do you feel about it are you ready he will ask or oh, everybody will shout okay so okay sir we are ready we are ready okay are you comfortable yes sir we are comfortable so we have to grab the attention of the listener yeah and some people whenever they begin the conversation as you told in the speech they have to ask uh, am i audible to you are you listening my voice so to grab the attention of the listener otherwise they will lose interest in the conversation Hmm. Very good yeah, technique. Very that's good so to... important. Yeah. So really, what you're saying then is, if for pacing and leading to be effective, it's got to be a two-way process. So it can't just be one person always pacing and leading. That you have to work together in establishing a pace and leading the conversation yeah, in, together. As a teacher also communicate. Yeah. In the classroom, we are making the two-way communication. Yes, that's so but true. Must be a. Uh, he cannot teach a whole day. He must. We must allow the uh, audience uh, to emphasize. How do you understand it? Do you have any doubt? Like that, we ask the question to them. Otherwise, so, on your voice gets affected. <laughs> it should be a two-way communication. Yes, true, true, true. No, that's so that should true. be a communicative classroom instead of one-way communication. It should be a two-way communication. Because it can be quite negative, you know, when you're in a situation in the conversation. And you can tell the other person is always pacing and leading and you can't get a word in. It's very annoying and frustrating. Then there's no rapport. You know, if one person keeps pacing and leading, then you don't get that rapport, which is why it's got to be done together. You know, have a mutual pace and then, you know, go in the same direction together rather than one person no, 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 all the time. Um, what do you think about <laughs> pacing and leading in arguments? Do you think... Do you think when people argue, do they do that? Are they conscious of pacing and leading, or are they not? What's, what's your view about argument? <laughs> Actually, uh, while you are going for argument, end of the argument, you thought that you have won the argument, but actually you lose the argument. <laughs> you are the loser. After that, he will never come at you and uh, have a talk with you. Yes. <laughs> Actually, you are the loser. Yeah. So, we must allow him to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And he, we must allow him, we must like a yeah, balance. Yeah. We must, That's we so must, true. Emotional balance yeah. very important. You know, one or two people I know will just carry on talking and they're not aware of the other person. They just want to keep talking and the pacing and leading. I'm thinking, what are you doing? You know, are you, I'm here, you know, you be connecting with me. And then I lose interest and then I just say, oh, right, that's it. You know, I want to walk away from this. And then you find that, yeah, that, you know, that person's not gained anything. All they did was just hear the sound of their own voice. <laughs> but I mean, that was also, yeah. yeah, sorry, carry on. That Steve. is also, uh, 
that is also called autocratic leadership yeah leadership, like hitler uh, yeah yeah so we yeah. say that do or die so that yeah. is what do as i do or die <laughs> yeah. do as i do you argue or die that's autocratic <laughs> we uh, that's a one way communication yeah they, yeah uh, leaders like hitler they expect one way communication they yeah. never listen uh, I don't know oh, whether you've yeah. heard some of Hitler's speeches. I mean, I've, I mean, you know, like, you know, we have YouTube now and then we can, I mean, there's a very good British channel on YouTube called British Pathé and you can go back to videos in the 1940s and 30s and you can watch Churchill speeches, you can watch Hitler speeches. I mean, both use pacing and leading in their own way. But when I, when I hear, um, you know, Hitler's speeches, without a doubt, he was very charismatic. but my god he was very powerful and very forceful with the way he expressed himself and yes very very clearly pacing and leading in a way to get people to think in such a way that was to the detriment of millions of people and that's the power of communication isn't it that's the power of communicating so it's a huge responsibility you've got to be able to be aware of the impact of how you say it and how you lead people you know and um and obviously some people misuse communication to um influence people in the wrong way you know to to condition them to make them think the way that they do you know people who abuse other people like mentally abuse or emotionally abuse they're using pacing and leading but they're using it in a way that's going to cause that is that gives them more power but it's to the detriment of the other person So you know, and so when people, for example, when you know abusers get therapy, they have to examine how they pace and lead their victims in the past for them to not do it again and to change their mindsets. And to, and this is where NLP is really helpful. Oh, sure, sure. And also the uh, the uh, eminent leaders like uh, Winston Churchill, yeah. Hitler, the uh, hand signals. The, yeah. They, hand signals are very powerful. They make it. and the hands to like that and then yeah. they make they open the two uh, two palms so they have to show the palms to yeah. the audience and they mean they will attract the audience the hand signals yeah. are very important yeah even like you know you know you know talking and putting standing up and talking and putting your hands on your hips shows authority and assertiveness and sometimes if you try and use this that that can show aggression when you're talking you know we've got to get to the top we've got to do the, be the best that we can be and that 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 is part of pacing and leading but it also you know the use of nonverbal communication you know it can it can also um come across quite negatively as well and then it creates fear as you said more of an autocratic style and i suppose people who adopt an autocratic style of leadership they're very very aware of the fact that pacing and leading helps them to get particular outcomes that they that they want whether it's good for people or not good for people but they're aware that they're using it absolutely okay satish thank you very much are there any final things you want to say about pacing and leading to just just to close out the segment anything else uh that one more thing is there uh, that's why the eminent leaders they always stood and uh, talk with the public yeah remember hitler uh, churchill because while you was uh, standing and talking with the audience you will easily control them mm yeah. so always yeah. sitting in the chair yeah the leader sit over the top yeah and talk to them so easily while you are sitting and talk with the others uh it will little bit uh, difficult to control everyone yeah yeah so standing and talking with uh, others audience you are you able to easily control the all the people that's why in the public speeches the leaders are standing and talking to the audience and then other are sitting in the downstairs and then listening especially the teachers lecturers scientists all are doing this yeah. these are all the typical thing brilliant that's fantastic that's a great that's a great way to close the segment uh, steesh thank you very much indeed so thank you everybody for watching uh, please do subscribe to this channel life genius uh, if you would wish to if you wish to receive very similar videos to what we've just uh, made for you in this podcast so uh, what we'll do in the next segment we will cover another aspect of neuro linguistic programming and how it can help you um to improve your communication skills and and to get the most out of life as well
So in the meantime then, thank you very much and thank you once again to Satish and uh, take care until next time.